Hey guys, I got a buddy who's got some property along US 41 here in Hopkins County, Kentucky. And uh, it's got a few apple trees and a few uh, pear trees on it. We're going to grab some of this stuff and, and uh, show you something really cool to do with some apples. Well guys, they're not the best looking apples in the world. But I only need a few. They're good and sweet. But this is hot dogs and apple pie. Okay guys, I, I knew I was only going to be out here for half a day. On my way out here, I stopped and got four apples. And uh, I went ahead and threw a couple hot dogs in this bag. Um, today I'm not carrying my backpack. I am carrying this modified version of a haversack. Something new. I had it laying around in my closet. I figured I'd give it a try out. So far, so good. But most importantly, I knew I was going to uh, cook a, a, an apple pie today. So I went ahead and brought my cook kit. And inside my cook kit... I just brought uh, a little bit of sugar with cinnamon in it and a little bit of butter in there and then just some plain old all-purpose flour and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with it all starting right now okay the first thing I want to talk about is my fire my fire that I'm gonna be cooking on is what's called a hunters or a trappers fire and basically all it is fire in between two bigger logs and basically all that does is uh, when your when your coals are ready to cook on you can slide those bigger logs together and get your skillet or whatever on top of it or whatever your cooking utensils are and use it as a, a makeshift stove. Uh, my fire that I'm prepping right now is a mixture of some softwoods and some hardwoods. I'll have a little bit of pine and some other softwoods out here to keep a heat and a flame going but I also have a mixture of hardwoods like a oak and hickory in there that's going to give me some some more stable coals, some longer lasting heat. But uh, secondly uh, above and beyond my fire is my cooking utensils. Now my cooking utensils are really not much more than I, I'd carry in a day pack. Uh, I always carry my canteen, my canteen cup. Every once in a while, 50% uh, of the time, depends on how long I'm going to be out, I'll throw this skillet in there, this, this uh, GI cook kit. I rarely ever use the plate, but I always use a skillet uh, when I have it. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is prep my apples, which is very simple. Okay guys, let's talk about prepping this apple. Uh, there's nothing to it. All I'm going to do is peel it. And you peel it just like you do anything. Uh, like a potato or whatever. I'm sure most of you out there have seen this before. Okay, once you get it peeled, you quarter it. Okay, once you get them quartered, all you do is cut that, uh, cut the core out of it. And that's basically just the seeds and a little, little um, area around it. Now this is a quartered apple. All I'm going to do from this point out is just cut my apple into thin slices like this now once I get the rest of my apples prepped I'll show you be careful though it'll get those knives to get you especially when they're sharp okay guys what I've got here is about a half a cup of apples And I'm just going to add a little bit of water, not much, just enough to barely coat the bottom of it. And I'm going to start to cook these apples down. Okay, while my apples are cooking, um, I want to show you how uh, I'm going to make the uh, the dough for the uh, the pie. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to roll, I'm going to throw all that out there. That's pro I don't even know how it is, how, how much that is. I just poured some in a, in a plastic baggie. The important thing is, is when you're making, making your dough, you start out with just a little bit of water. A little bit of water at a time. And 
and you gradually add water. Is this gonna? It's it's already starting to clump up pretty, pretty quickly and pretty easily. And I'll complete this process. You just barely. You can see how it's already starting to meet up. That's why you just want to put a little bit at a time. Because you want this to meet into a. Uh, basically, you just want a a, a dough ball. A, a, a relatively dry dough ball. Okay, one thing you're going to notice is see how this is just flaking up? It's doughing up, but it's flaking. So, what that means is it's still a little dry. So, you just add just a little bit of water. You got to be careful at this point in it because if you put too much water in it, you're going to have a very wet. dough ball. Very sticky, I mean. Okay, you'll continue this process until you get it to the next phase, which is your completed dough ball. And uh, if, it, if you get sticky spots in it, you see how this uh, flower is laying around on the outside, you will uh, just dab it in it, and before you know it, you've kneaded yourself into a nice little dough ball. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean up my fingers a little bit and kind of knead that in, and then I'll catch back up with you on the next step. Okay guys. This is the kind of ball you're looking for. Just a doughy ball. It's not too, and you see how it's not sticking to my fingers? It has a little bit of a dry feel to it on the outside, but that's, that's the ball you're looking for. And this one is, oh, this ball is just a little bit bigger than a baseball, smaller than a softball. Uh, let's check on our apples. I want to show you a small trick with it while you're cooking your apples. Now, my apples here are sitting on this hunter's fire, and the trick, a trick to helping these apples do well is get you, make you a little makeshift lid uh, and set it on top. It keeps moisture in, and let's take a look at them. See how they're starting to turn soft? We're going to cook them down just a little bit farther, a little bit more than that, and then uh, we'll catch back up with that in a second. Okay, now while we're waiting for them apples to finish cooking up, we're going to um, do two things with this uh, piece of dough. We're going to we're going to chunk up, take off about a third, close to a half, and we're going to set it aside. Now this other piece, we're going to we're going to get that as thin as we possibly get it. Now the thing about it is, the best thing to do is just take on your piece of plastic here, this just happened to be a Ziploc baggie, spread your, spread your flour out just a little bit, because you're going to be putting some pressure on this, this, this uh, the dough ball here, and you don't want it sticking. So basically all you're going to do is knead it, or smash it out. And you'll know if you're pushing too hard, because you'll feel, you'll feel that dough get uh, so thin that you'll feel the, the plastic below it. You don't want to do that, you just keep pushing it outwards like I'm doing and you want to get this thing uh, not twice the size of the cooking surface but we're gonna get it just a little bit bigger than this pan and we're getting pretty close right now but we're gonna want this pretty thin and it's just a, it's just a slow process or you just gradually push it out. You want this, you want to get your uh, your dough kind of evenly spread out across. It's kind of hard to do on the ground because you'll have uh, divots in the ground and you'll have thicker spots, but that's not going to be really, really, really 
important. You just want it fairly thin. It's about like a pizza crust, maybe a little thinner. But you just keep playing with it and mashing it out until you get it to the desired size. And now we're right at where I want to be. I want see how this is a little oblong. Well, my pan's a little oblong too. Okay. Once you get that done, see it's bigger. You fold it over. You're gonna have a nice. You're gonna have a nice fried pie here. Now this, you do the same thing. You just repeat the process, and you just squish it out as, as far as you can. And then I'll show you what we're gonna do with it after we get it uh, smashed out. Okay guys, our apples here are just about ready for the next step. Uh, actually, they may be just a, little, just a little bit overcooked. Maybe my... Well, they're sticking just a little bit to the side, but they're not burnt. But you can see what, what we got there. It's some nice... Nice looking cooked apples. Now, what I'm going to do is, my mixture that I brought out here, and all this is is butter, cinnamon, and sugar. Uh, no special ratio. I just put some sugar in there. Stuck some, uh, stuck some cinnamon in there. And let it rip. Now, even though there's some butter in there, I'm gonna go ahead and just put hit it with hit a splash of water. Not a whole lot, but just a little bit, enough to moisten that up enough enough to keep it from uh, keep it from caramelizing any more than what it's caramelizing. We're gonna set this back on the fire, and then we're gonna let it set for just a very short time. Okay. It doesn't take but a second to put those back up on the fire and uh, they flash right up and they brown that that quick and those apples are done so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take this empty five hour energy bottle which has vegetable oil in it that I keep in my cook kit and I'm just gonna really coat the bottom of that pan. Now you'll put a little bit more in this pan than you would on your regular pan because your heat's not really controllable. Now I do have this thing down to I do have this thing down to uh, my fire down to a level that, that it's just coals and where I've mixed in the hardwood and softwood I got a good bed of coals in there to finish this up. Now here's what you want to do You'll take your you'll take your um, your dough that you've meated out. You hold it in your hand. You'll take this, put it in the middle like you was going like you're making a burrito, and you want it to go a long ways. just like that. Now what you'll do is fold that over you want to smash that to get the ends together the best you can and all you're doing is smashing that down together now what you'll notice if you remember your grandma doing this or your mom doing this or whatever this is where your your uh, your little uh, creases get on the outside that look like a fork. Well, that's what they do. They just smash it down with a fork and it looks pretty cool. But out here in the field, you just squeeze it. And there you go. You're going to have we're going to have a nice fried pie. And uh, when you put this in here, when you put this in a skillet, you want to make sure that you your uh, you look at your pan your pan again and make sure that that uh, oil is evenly coated. And then you'll just Lay it right down in there. Just like that.
Now we're going to the fire. Okay guys, this is what we're going to do with our uh, our extra dough ball. We're going to tear it in half. Then we're going to get one of our hot dogs, we're going to stick it. You're going to do that. You're going to do this hot dog the same way you did that uh, You're going to do this the same way you did that pie. And you're just squeezing it. You can do this one of two ways. You can do it just like this. You can do it just like that. Or you can stick it. And just pull this apart again, and then all you all you'll do is wrap it around the the hot dog, pinch it together, and then pinch it together where it mats it together, and then you have two dogs. Now this takes a little bit longer than cooking a regular hot dog, so all you're going to do is just kind of lean it over, lean it over the fire, and then you'll be good to go. All this is is a fork and stick. You can baton down a piece of wood, make it flat, sharpen it on one end. You got to on these little old GI, GI skillets, you have to continually kind of move the uh, skillet around to keep that oil, unless you got a really flat cooking surface. Because if not, then what'll happen is you'll 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 burn one of your um, sides of your your pie there to the point where it's too burnt. Now this, when you're cooking this, you've really got to stay on top of it and watch what's going on. Because right now, it's, it's done. You'll pull it off. And drop it on a cooler surface. I'm going to sit and let this cool for just a minute. Well, guys, the payoff is great. These hot dogs are good. It's fun. The fried apple pies turned out really good. Had um, a little bit of a darker spot, but that's commonplace with fried apple pies.
It's just the way it is. Guys, I hope that your Memorial Day weekend or your Labor Day weekend was as good as mine. And I really appreciate you guys uh, watching my videos. Until next time, we'll see you. Thanks for watching.